I'm Mo Vos, I'm a linguist and I work at the linguistic department of the Royal Museum for um, Central Africa. I work on African languages and more specifically Bantu languages. Bantu languages are spoken um, from Cameroon, that's in the northwest, um, all the way to the east and then to the south. Um, and that's a very large area of Africa. Those are 500. Um, Bantu languages and the name Bantu is derived from the word for people in all these languages. The first question I usually get is why I study African languages and more specifically Bantu languages. Well, there's two important reasons why this is different from studying other languages. And that's um, because uh, these 500 Bantu languages, well, that's not a fixed number. There are still languages that are not known, others are disappearing. And of these 500 languages, here in the museum, um, we have 350 languages that are documented. Now this documentation is va varying in, in quality and also in quantity, so you have very large grammars and you have very small grammars. So that means that there's still a lot of work to be done, so a lot of grammars to be written, which is very nice. I, I really like grammars and um, dictionaries. For example, if I would go to a new country, as a tourist, I would return with a dictionary or a grammar. Um, so that is one important reason for myself. Another reason is that African cultures are oral cultures. So a lot of their history, tradition and knowledge is transmitted orally from generation to generation. And this means that, well, if a language disappears, there's a whole um, world of information that also disappears. Since these languages do not have um, written texts, the only way to study them is to go to the field, so to meet the people that speak the languages. That's the only way to study them. And often this means going to very remote villages, because in the larger African towns, people speak languages that are already described or they speak ex-colonial languages. Next to being remote, they also don't have a lot of facilities. So um, that means that our work as linguists is also rather simple, so you actually you can do a whole lot with just a pen and paper. The first thing to do is to collect um, vocabulary, so a word list, and that's actually quite simple. It's like a child, you go around asking what is this and what is this, and um, people actually appreciate it because they see you struggling with the language and they also hear you making mistakes, which for them is very funny. In the end, once you learn the language, little by little, uh, people really appreciate that you know the language because then you can start to communicate. That's what's language for. And they can also ask you things. So many evenings I spent um, in front of my door sitting on the floor with a lot of people and they ask me about Europe. I spend the evenings trying to explain in the local language what central heating is like in Europe. Um, but then, of course, that's the, the, that's the vocabulary and learning the language, but you have to know the structure also. And how do we do that? Well, we start by asking small sentences. And at first it sounds like something in Chile, Womu to Kuno. So it sounds like it's one word, but then you have to try to distinguish the words and make it a sentence. Once you have the words, you can stri try to see what these words are built of. So you divide the words in, in several parts and in the end you know, well, this sentence just meant, how are you this morning? And after many months of, of working on, on the language and the, the notebooks are accumulating and then you can write a grammar. The nice thing is that there's still so much to do once you have a grammar and a word list of a language. So firstly, um, you can try to make a pedagogical grammar out of it or textbooks. And then next, these grammars are used to reconstruct the history of a language. Since there are no written texts, we have to do it by comparing languages. Not only the history of the language, but also the history of the people that speak the language. And another thing is that theoretical linguistics are mostly based, so theories about language are mostly based on European languages. And by studying African languages, you have a test ground for these theories and people have to rethink the theories because they have new information from new languages. So these languages are very important on, on different levels. And so there's really a lot of work to do still, even after fieldwork.